It's six in the morning and her alarm goes off. Time to get up, little girl. Say hello to the world. On a cold day in September, when she would come to remember, when she had thus far looked forward to, counting down the days to her birthday, one morning she finally began her teen days. This one started off like any other, with a girl who only lived with her mother. Never knew her father, but neither did her mother. Yet she met many of mom's friends, hoping he'd be one or the other. And today, like any other Wednesday, she'd meet another. Sat in the kitchen with tea and a biscuit. Are you daddy? She asked as he was sipping it. No, he replied, surprised. What makes you say that? Well, then you must be John. Mom only likes men named John or daddy. <laughs> she replied as she made her back. See, for as long as she could remember, Mama had this habit on Tuesday nights of inviting different friends, and this is pretty much all she'd ever known of men, that they were all mom's friends, named, named either John or daddy or both, but never quite her father. And today, like any other Wednesday, mommy wasn't feeling too well to leave her room, so the little girl had to get ready and walk to school. And as she started leaving and walked out of her home, she smiled and said bye to John, who'd been on the phone. Wait, little girl, where are you off to? To school, of course. I'm late and I need to go. You're late? Well, hold on, let me help you. I'm sorry, but Mama said never to take favors from strangers. But I'm a friend with a car. You'd get there much faster. She hesitated. You promised to take me straight to school? Of course. What else would I do? And so they both got into John's car. A couple of minutes later, they hadn't made it that far when his phone rang and he picked it. Hey, Brenda. I just left your place. You need what? Right now? Okay, I'll get it. Little girl, your mom needs some medicine. But school! You care about your mother, don't you? Don't worry, we'll get it, go back, and then to school. It will only take a few minutes. Okay, but well hurry up, I'm late enough as it is. So John stopped someone with no pharmacy in sight, but came back from an empty house with a bag in hand. That looks like that milk powder mama likes. Yes, little girl, this will make her feel all right. And so they rushed back home. Stay in the car, he said as he walked inside to give mommy what she desired. Twelve minutes later, he still hadn't come back out. So the little girl got mad and walked into the house. What are you doing here? I told you to stay in the car. She noticed he seemed different. Eyes half shut with a smirk on his face. Your mom's resting now. Don't make a sound. Don't bother her. But you broke your promise, you big fat liar! Shh. Come. I'm sorry. Let me make it up to you. Let's go to your room. I'm your mom's friend. Let me show you I could be your friend too. She tried to push him back, but it was too late. Nothing she could do would ever change her fate. And from then on, and from that point I can't describe She tried to push him back, but it was too late. Nothing she could do to change her fate. And what happened next, I find too graphic to describe, but I will tell you this. That in a house in which you could hear moans of, Daddy, Daddy, on Tuesday nights, a little girl cried out muffled screams of, that Wednesday morning. That Wednesday, she would remember forever morning. Because from then on, it didn't matter how much she tried or how much she cried. That's the day the child inside of her died. <laughs>